call you? Doral Avenue 43213. Good evening, everyone in council. I am here on behalf of the Whitehall Area Chamber. I thought Shirley was going to be here. She did not make it yet. But tomorrow, we're going to have our annual meeting. And at that annual meeting, we're going to have um, Gail Kelly. She is one of the five largest franchise owners of Two Men in a Truck. We will also have Robert Lee, who is the owner of Tim Hortons on Broad Street, Livingston Avenue, another one, and he also owns the Donato's Pizza in, um, in the airport. So, and also our own economic development director, Zach Woodruff. So we're going to have a, we're going to allow each person to speak for about 10 minutes. The topic is how to grow your business wisely. And then following that, we're going to have an opportunity for the attendees to ask questions to the panel. Our goal this year is to grow the chamber. Um, we've taken some time to get some administrative things taken care of with the chamber. We're going to be launching our new website. Um, and we're also going to be allowing other organizations to come in to present, larger, larger corporations to come in and present so they can get um, you know, just some business ideas and business tips on how to grow businesses 
for some of our local people here in Whitehall because we believe that small business is great business. We know we have large corporations, we want them to join, but we also want to pull on some of our smaller businesses too here in the community. So we want to let you know that we're having that tomorrow from 9 to 11 over at the ONA building. And that is my commercial. Thank you. 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 Uh, our minutes are on file, and I think we're meeting again next for the Tuesday of the 30th. Is that correct? Correct. And that's right, we're 6 30 at the All right. Well, uh, thank you. That brings us now to community engagement. Chairperson Thomas. Thank you, President. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
for the appointment of Greg Thurman and Kyra Coons to the Parks and Recreation <coughs> Commission. Questions or comments? Ms. Tristan, please call the roll. I missed the second. Yeah. Uh, I second. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you. Did you? Did you? Did you? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, you were seven.
in the total sum of $9,405,558.03 and declaring an emergency. Mr. President, I will then introduce Ordinance 88. Move to adopt. Second. A motion by Mr. Bailey and a second by Mr. Kanner for the introduction and adoption of Ordinance 88-2014. Questions or comments? Ms. Churchill, please call the roll. Gray? Yes. Connison? Yes. Kanner? Yes. LaCour? Yes. Bailey? Yes. Ordinance 88-2014 has been adopted. Next we have Ordinance 89-2014. It's amending various sections of Chapter 135 of the Administrative Code and adding 135.23, Life Cycle Replacement Fund, and 135.24, Economic Development Incentives Fund, and declaring an emergency. Mr. President, I'd like to introduce Ordinance 89-2014 and move for its adoption. Second. A motion by Ms. LaCour and a second by Ms. Connison for the introduction and adoption of Ordinance 89-2014. Questions or comments? Ms. Churchill, please call the roll. Gray? Yes. Connison? Yes. Kanner? Yes. LaCour? Yes. Bailey? Yes. Ordinance 89-2014 has been adopted. Next we have Ordinance 90-2014 to make the appropriation for current general fund expenses, street expenses, and state highway materials expenses during the period from January 1, 2015 to December 31, 2015 in a total sum of $28,109,117 and declaring an emergency. Mr. President, I'll introduce Ordinance 90-2014 move to adopt. Second. A motion by Mr. Bailey and a second by Mr. Kanner for the introduction and adoption of Ordinance 90-2014. Questions or comments? Ms. Churchill, please call the roll. Gray? Yes. Connison? Yes. Kanner? Yes. LaCour? Yes. Bailey? Yes. Ordinance 90-2014 has been adopted. Next we have Ordinance 91-2014. It's amending Section 161.38 of the codified ordinances of the City of Whitehall, Ohio, titled Salary Schedule 135.14, titled Tax Auditor, Part-Time, 145.02, titled Duties of Chief Building Inspector, 145.09, titled Building Inspector, Full-Time, 131.02, titled Director of Information Technology, and 161.37, titled Table of Authorized Personnel, and declaring an emergency. Mr. President, I'd like to introduce Ordinance 91-2014 adoption. Second. A motion by Mr. Kanner and a second by Mr. Bailey for introduction and adoption of Ordinance 91-2014. Questions or comments? Ms. Churchill, please call the roll. Gray? Yes. Connison? Yes. Kanner? Yes. LaCour? Yes. Bailey? Yes. Ordinance 91-2014 has been adopted. Unfortunately, depends on how you want to look at it, we have no items on the second reading this evening, so we will move to our first reading, Ordinances and Resolutions, and we begin with Ordinance 93-2014, approving and making an appropriation transfer in the amount of $80,000 for the Police and Firemen Pension Account to the Self-Funded Health Insurance Account and declaring an emergency. Mr. President, I'd like to introduce Ordinance 93-2014 with the suspension of the rules. Second. A motion by Mr. Bailey, second by Ms. LaCour for the introduction and suspension of all rules on Ordinance 93-2014. Questions or comments? Ms. Churchill, please call the roll. Gray? Yes. Connison? Yes. Kanner? Yes. LaCour? Yes. Bailey? Yes. The rules have been suspended on Ordinance 93-2014. Move to adopt. Second. 
Second. Motion by Mr. Bailey, second by Mr. Report for adoption of Ordinance 93 2014. Ms. Churchman, please call the roll. Gray? Yes. Connison? Yes. Tanner? Yes. Accord? Yes. Bailey? Yes. Ordinance 93 2014 has been adopted. Next we have Ordinance 94 2014, approving and making an appropriation transfer in the amount of $20,000 from the utility expense account to the street lighting expense account and declaring an emergency. Mr. President, I move to introduce Ordinance 94 2014 and move for suspension of the rules. Second. I have a motion by Mr. Bailey, second by Ms. Connison for introduction and suspension of all rules on Ordinance 94 2014. Questions or comments? Ms. Churchman, please call the roll. Gray? Yes. Connison? Yes. Tanner? Yes. Report? Yes. Bailey? Yes. The rules have been suspended on Ordinance 94 2014. Move to adopt. Second. Motion by Mr. Bailey, second by Ms. Connison for adoption of Ordinance 94 2014. Ms. Churchman, please call the roll. Gray? Yes. Connison? Yes. Tanner? Yes. Report? Yes. Bailey? Yes. Ordinance 94 2014 has been adopted. Next we have Ordinance 95 2014. It's approving and making appropriation transfers from various general fund expense accounts in the total amount of $17,500 to the police salaries account and declaring an emergency. Mr. President, I move to introduce Ordinance 95 2014 for suspension of the rules. Second. Motion by Mr. Bailey, second by Ms. Connison for introduction and suspension of all rules on Ordinance 95 2014. Questions or comments? Ms. Churchman, please call the roll. Gray? Yes. Connison? Yes. Tanner? Yes. Report? Yes. Bailey? Yes. The rules have been suspended on Ordinance 95 2014. Move to adopt. Second. Motion by Mr. Bailey, second by Ms. Connison for adoption of Ordinance 95 2014. Ms. Churchman, please call the roll. Gray? Yes. Connison? Yes. Tanner? Yes. Report? Yes. Bailey? Yes. Ordinance 95 2014 has been adopted. Next we have Ordinance 96 2014. It's approving and making appropriation transfers from various general fund expense accounts in the total amount of $4,600 to the radio operator's salary account and declaring an emergency. Mr. President, I move to introduce Ordinance 96 2014 for suspension of the rules. Second. A motion by Mr. Bailey and a second by Ms. Connison for introduction and suspension of all rules on Ordinance 96 2014. Questions or comments? Ms. Churchman, please call the roll. Gray? Yes. Connison? Yes. Tanner? Yes. Report? Yes. Bailey? Yes. The rules have been suspended on Ordinance 96 2014. Move to adopt. Second. Motion by Mr. Bailey, second by Ms. Connison for adoption of Ordinance 96 2014. Ms. Churchman, please call the roll. Gray? Yes. Connison? Yes. Tanner? Yes. Report? Yes. Bailey? Yes. Ordinance 96 2014 has been adopted. Next we have Resolution 90. Back up here. We have Resolution 52. I got caught up on the last one in the 90s. So this is actually the 2000s. So I don't know how that plays out. But anyway, we have Resolution 52 2014. It's letting special assessments for property maintenance at several locations in the city of Whitehall, Ohio. Addresses and parcel numbers are provided within the text of the resolution and certifying such costs to the Franklin County Auditor to be assessed against such property and declaring an emergency. Mr. President, I wish to introduce Resolution 52 2014 with the suspension of all rules. Second. A motion by Mr. Gregg and a second by Ms. LaPorte for introduction and suspension of all rules on Resolution 52 2014. Questions or comments? Ms. Churchman, please call the roll. 
Gray? Yes. Connison? Yes. Tanner? Yes. Laporte? Yes. Bailey? Yes. The rules have been suspended on Resolution 52-2014. Move to adopt. Second. Motion by Mr. Gray, second by Ms. Laporte for adoption of Resolution 52-2014. Ms. Turkman, please call the roll. Gray? Yes. Connison? Yes. Tanner? Yes. Laporte? Yes. Bailey? Yes. Resolution 52-2014 has been adopted. Next, we have Resolution 53-2014, approving the continuation of a tax exemption agreement with the Channel Properties No. 101 LLC, Columbus NBM 5 LLC, and FedEx Ground Packing System Incorporated in conjunction with the City of Whitehall Community Reinvestment Area Program and declaring an emergency. Mr. President, I'd like to introduce Resolution 53-2014 for suspension of all rules. Second. Motion by Mr. Bailey, second by Ms. Thompson for introduction and suspension of rules on Resolution 53-2014. Questions or comments? Mr. Cook, please call the roll. Gray? Yes. Connison? Yes. Tanner? Yes. Laporte? Yes. Bailey? Yes. The rules have been suspended on Resolution 53-2014. Move to adopt. Second. Motion by Mr. Bailey, second by Ms. Thompson for adoption of Resolution 53-2014. Ms. Churchman, please call the roll. Gray? Yes. Connison? Yes. Tanner? Yes. Laporte? Yes. Bailey? Yes. Resolution 53-2014 has been adopted. Those are all the items of legislation we have this evening. I don't know what we're going to do at our next meeting because we have no pieces of legislation left. Who wants to make a sum? Oh, I have a good authority that there will be at least one piece coming from the auditor. There will be one from me. Okay, one from the member. So we'll be busy at the beginning of the year. This is our second opportunity for poll voting. If anyone would like to address council, please come forward, state your name and address for the record. Can you add up to three minutes? I don't want to get sick. Well, you guys said that in the beginning. I just made it short. My name is Lori Elmore. I reside at 645 Fairway Boulevard. And thank you for the opportunity to the president and all the distinguished panel. As I sat here and was listening to the council meetings, and I've attended several council meetings, it dawned on me like we just got the information online, and I appreciate that. It's helpful to go back and listen to what's happening when I watch it on TV and that sort of thing. But one of the other things that I was thinking as I was sitting here is that if somebody was to view in and see, well, what's going on in the council meeting, will they really understand what they're hearing? And so the thought came to me of maybe some type of how the process of the council goes that's on the website, like a YouTube or tutorial or some type of training module that helps the community at large understand exactly what they're viewing, what motions mean, what does some of the, and we're declaring an emergency mean. When somebody says we don't have a report, have they been working behind the scenes to make things happen so that the community at large understands what happens at our council meetings and not just to see the finished project and say, wow, we got a building, or look at this library, it looks beautiful, and not know that in the council meetings all the different things that are planning in the background has been done and they will better understand. And I think we'd have more participation, either not maybe in our audience or whatever, but viewing, because I know that website hits, all of that comes into play when you're looking at value added. And so that's the only thing that I might, you know, I thought, you know, you guys would give careful consideration because it would just be helpful to everybody. Thank you for your time. All right, thank you. Mr. Governor, can I respond just briefly? Yes. I think that's an excellent idea, some really good observations on your part. I would like to explain why 99% of the time I do not give a report. That's because the vast majority of what I would be reporting on is attorney-client privilege, such as pending litigation and a variety of other matters. So I figure it's better to be conservative in that regard. So I thought I would give you that explanation while you're here this evening. But your point is well taken. Thank you. And I'll make another comment. Oftentimes, 
there are reports from the auditor. There's reports from the treasurer, which I read and the reports that we have received. So the reports are there oftentimes. However, it doesn't make sense for the auditor or the treasurer to repeat something that is part of counsel's duty to report on the reports that they have received. So, but that is all. I totally understand. It's a good point. I'm sure everybody could use a little lesson in how government operates. And so, you know, I think that's a very good idea. You know, what does this, what's this, what are the duties of this committee? You know, yeah. And just a general explanation, an explanation of terms used or something like that. Actually, my reports are online, too. So if you ever want to see them, just drop a bar down to the auditor and you'll see all my reports. And the treasurer's reports are there, too. Now, see, that's something that could be on the, you know. Yeah. Auditor's reports, they may be viewed online, you know. Well, just what I was going to say is maybe I can work with Carol and we can get a definition on that. The page I think you're referring to more is, excuse me, where the YouTube videos are, where people go and watch them. Maybe a definition of emergency and the different pieces of action and consequences. That's a very easy thing to do. How many votes does it take to piece of, to pass a piece of legislation that has an emergency clause? Or if, how many votes would it be for a piece of legislation that doesn't have an emergency clause? There's a lot of little nuances that people could gain some knowledge from if, you know, if we were to put the information out there. I think that's a pretty good idea. I don't want to pile anything on Gail, but it is a good idea. You want to star on YouTube? I'm going to star. All right. Anyone else? Yes. Please come forward. State your name and address for the record. You have a few minutes. Yes. My name is Clinton Elmore and I also reside at 645 Fairway Boulevard. You guys live in the same house? Yeah. We like each other. Yeah, she has lots of great ideas, you know, and she's always sharing them with me in terms of what I need to do around the house. So, but again, I appreciate last week getting the opportunity to talk to you all about my concerns in regards to public safety and how we can be proactive in our, in this, in this very important time right now in terms of community and police relations. And I was happy to hear that there has been discussion about the use of body cameras in Whitehall with our police department. I was really happy to hear that, but I would like to hear a little bit more about those discussions and maybe you can help us, help me with that, Mr. Underwood, in terms of what, what did those discussions sound like? I mean, are we talking about we're leaning towards it, we're looking into it, we're not going to do it, or it's still out there on the table or we're researching it. So if I could just get an idea of, 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 of how, you know, the, the, the city council and all of you, how you feel about the use of body cameras in effort to be transparent in our dealings with, with the police department and try to be proactive and get ahead of, of what we see, the troubles that we see in so many communities around the country. So again, I appreciate your time and, and I appreciate any of your comments that you might have. Thank you. Mr. President, may I respond? Yes, sir. Sir, there, there are some preliminary considerations. That's a lot more in depth than one would think about. It's real simple to say, well, we'll put a couple hundred dollar camera on somebody's chest and let them videotape whatever happens. We have to know how well they work, what happens if they malfunction, what the cost is, whether we'll get a grant for it. The cost is much more than you would believe in the sense that we have to have a storage battery rack to charge and store all the batteries. We have to have extras. We, 
the time for the clerks are going, is going to expand, uh, which may create overtime in the sense that there'll be more freedom of information requests that would have to be honored. Uh, there's just a myriad of things that you don't think about until a number of people sit around the round table and start talking about it. We're in the preliminary stages. Much of it might have to depend on whether we are granted or given a grant, uh, but it will happen, I believe. So I, I hope I answered your initial concerns on this. Okay. Well, is there anyone else who would like to address council? I just have a question. I'm going to do the, pro the formalities. Joy Bivens for an 85 Doral Avenue. I know that many times when we, when we talk about, and thank you for bringing that up, because I was thinking about that earlier. Um, many times when things happen in the media, because it doesn't happen in our community, we don't talk about those things. Has any of the committees considered having a forum to discuss? You know, people don't like to talk about racism, race relations, you know, not like getting along with the police, because it's an uncomfortable conversation. But have we thought about, because many times, and I think in this community, everyone knows everyone, but if you're not from this community, you're new, I don't, you may not know that the officer that's standing in the, in the Kroger is really your friend. He's not a, a racist cop, what people, you know, a lot of people think, or whatever. But have we thought about having a community forum to engage the community to talk about some of the things that have happened in the media? What's that about? Again, may I respond? Yes. Um, I, I believe that through the tra our annual training requirements, that our, our officers are pretty well versed in that type of situation. Mm -hmm. uh, some of the training that we get is real live, live type training. For instance, this past week, they had active shooting training uh, over at the armory, where they're shooting uh, almost real bullets at each other in the sense of paintball things. You know, going through you know, securing rooms and right. trying to rescue hostages and, and whatnot. So I, I, I do believe our training is encompassing what your concerns are, uh, but at the same time, you can have all the training in the world, but until there's an actual incident, you really don't know how a person or yourself is going to react. Uh, you know, the gentleman starts falling, and sets in, or, or whatnot. So uh, yeah, we, try, we are trying to do as, as much active as we possibly can within our budget constraints. And I think our cops, I think our police officers do a great job. I don't have a problem with them. I'm just saying for our residents, so they can build a relationship with the police force and just, you know, we have a lot of young people in this community and the demographics have changed so that there's a friendly conversation because again, I've, I've never experienced anything like that before, but it's a, it's a good topic to have in a community and I, and I know our, our police officers do a great job, but does the person that lives on a uh, country club know know that? Just a thought. May I answer? Yes, ma'am. Uh, Joy, um, uh, after um, the last uh, council meeting, uh, both the uh, director and I uh, had a meeting with uh, the chief and brought up concerns that Mr. Elmore had brought forward. Uh, so we, we did uh, talk uh, quite in depth about those concerns and also the need uh, to be and to build better relationships with the community. Now, what that's going to look like yet, we don't know, okay. because we just started the, the discussion. Okay. But uh, our police chief is very open to that. I just wanted to let you know that. Thank, Thank you. you. Yes. And then also, Joy, a couple of years ago, we actually had like an open forum, like we were talking about. It's been a couple of years, we really need to do more of those kind of things. Um, we have the Park, and we actually have all the safety forces there. 
So it was, the whole community was invited to it so they could ask questions of them. Mm -hmm. And so I think that we just need to do more of those kind of events to where the public is invited in to talk to them. And then they would get to know that they're actually very nice human beings that <laughs> not always come on that uniform as well. That they, you know, they're just down to earth people just like, like we are. So I think that's, I'm not interested in all bring that up.
just want to echo what joy said earlier. the chamber annual meeting is tomorrow morning at nine o'clock at the pride nurses ah nurses association location on main street and then i also wanted to make council aware um so that you can share with your constituents and friends um as as they have done in years past white county united methodist church will be offering free lunch again to students during the two weeks of christmas break i know it's kind of up in the air at first because they have a new pastor but um they are going to be offering that so um please share that with anyone who's believe you might know that information um and other than that we are in the planning process for all of our two thousand and fifteen events right now actually just talking about national and and out just wrote the sponsorship package today and um i'm working with a company about possibly coming in as a sponsor and and actually giving out more homes so um working on it and we'll be excited to share those dates with you shortly i do i have the winners of the christmas um ward one if anybody wants to drive around see all the pretty lights 78 maplewood avenue is ward one ward two the winner the number one home was 4091 andrus avenue ward three was 122 patricia lane and ward four was 943 road i'm so sorry i know again right all the kids in or something (laughs) and the winner out of all of them my neighbor 4091 andrus avenue and if you have not seen this home you need to drive around i'll see you yeah. <laughs> every year, every year Jack Brown adds more and more lights, more inflatables, more decorations. A stand up on the roof this year. It wasn't there last year. Um, he's got music, so you tune your radio to 881 and um, lights 881. Lights sparkle and uh, dance right with the music and. It is really something to see. Four zero nine million in this cabin. Cool, cool.
but this evening, um, sorry, I haven't, I have not felt good all day, but I knew we were voting on the budget, so I just wanted to come in and make sure everybody knew that I did support the budget this year, and um, really is a good budget. Other than that, I just want to also tell everybody have a happy holiday season, and I look forward to working with everybody in 2015, and um, supporting the community. So thank you again for being here. Thank you, Ms. President. I thank you all for coming. Congratulations, Commissioner Thurman, on your new opinion and service. And I appreciate uh, you folks sharing your ideas and thoughts. I think it's wonderful. Uh, happy Hanukkah. Thank you. And I'd like to wish everybody a Merry Christmas. And while you're enjoying the holidays with family and friends, let's just take a moment to reflect on the reason for the season. That's all I have. Well, I want to thank everyone for coming out this evening. I also want to wish everybody uh, whatever they celebrate for in the next couple of weeks. I hope it's, uh, that it's very much enjoyed by you and your family and everyone involved uh, with that celebration. Whichever it may be, because there's too many of them, I can't. I can only name a couple of them, and I, and I don't want to miss any. So, <laughs> uh, but you know, it, it's that time of year when, when we're all celebrating uh, something. Uh, so, it should be a time of joy and, and a time when we all get together with our families and and, and do what comes uh, naturally uh, when we all get together. So. I also want to say a lot of great comments this evening, uh, both from over there, up here, and especially from out there. I appreciate all the comments. We always do. You know, if people don't come here and, 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 and let us know, oftentimes we're not sure, you know, if what to do next sometimes, you know. I mean, everybody has ideas. Let's share them. That's, that's what it should be all about, We're sharing our ideas. And, uh, we put everything together and we can come up with a really great city. Yes. So, uh, I believe we have no other uh, official business before this evening, so I would uh, entertain a, mo a motion for adjournment. I do want to say that our next meeting will not be until after the first of the year for City Council on the 30th. We will have our uh, committee meetings. Mr. President. Yes, sir. Second. Motion by Mr. Bailey, second by Ms. LaCour for adjournment uh, of our last council meeting of the year. <coughs> is, is everybody okay with that? I mean, all right, Mr. Thomas. Greg. Yes. Thomason. Yes. Tanner. Yes. LaCour. Yes. Bailey. Yes. All right, we are adjourned. We'll see you next year, if not sooner. <laughs> You. How are you? Are you? Yes. 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 Yes.